Hello. <laughs> it's more time. Hi, my Western. name is my name is Geoff. <laughs> Geoff. God damn it. I am an absolute legend. I'm not pumping and dumping. <laughs> by day, I, I don't... fuck shit up, and by night, I fuck more shit up. I am the absolute best at this. Everybody buys Ion. I'm a prophet. You're welcome. <laughs> Million dollars. Boom, bap. <laughs> All right. Sell That's going to be sell, the intro. Sell me this fucking pen. <laughs> God damn it. All right, I'm actually making that the first 20 seconds of the intro, so we can start this off right. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Sports Card Corner, episode number one. Uh, getting it started nice and hot here with the NBA reopening. Um, my name is Alec, and uh, also known as Cutting Edge Cards on Instagram, also joined with Caleb. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself, and we'll kind of get into uh, who you are, who I am, and what we're doing here. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, so... uh my name's Caleb. Uh, you can follow me at Caleb Sports Cards on Instagram. I just made it, so. <laughs> and uh, I guess, yeah, I've, I've been in the hobby, I guess, on and off uh, throughout my childhood. Uh, my dad was really big into it uh, back in the 90s uh, when everybody was really into it. And uh, sports cards kind of crashed, but uh, I, he still kind of had that love for it. And so I would go to the card shops and stuff as a kid. Uh, pick up card stuff and card packs so I was kind of always around a little bit of hobby and uh, retail sports cards and kind of just you know would pick up a pack here or there um, I guess I really got into it again uh, right around 2016 um, I really liked football and basketball were kind of my two main uh, things I collect uh, with just a, a dabble in baseball uh, but I, I started a uh, you know, really collecting uh, basketball in 2016. I made a bet that the Warriors would win their first championship. Steph Curry would win his uh, first championship kind of midway through the season. And uh, I guess that really kind of watching the Warriors play basketball on that three ball really kind of got me excited about sports again. Uh, just uh, on a like on a personal, like fun to watch basis. And so I kind of drifted back into the sports cards and that was – Giannis's uh third year and um I kind of started buying cards and old hobby packs from that year because it was dirt cheap because funny enough nobody thought anybody from that rookie class was good but I believed in Giannis <laughs> so I was picking up Giannis cards for like three to five dollars uh for his rookies uh back in 2016 uh which is pretty hilarious uh looking back at it now just that <laughs> at that so and then you know with those kind of popping off uh the way that they did i kind of really got into um investing i guess a little bit more and also i would buy steph curry's too because i was really excited and um he ended up doing pretty well for himself and actually winning that championship as all of you know and many more so uh that's kind of that's kind of where i'm at in the hobby yeah uh, yeah how about you alec that's how we got so we got to hear. Um, as far as me, um, I am a bit more newer. I guess I'm kind of a new age card guy. Uh, I was introduced to Caleb through a, a buddy of mine. I mean, we had met previously, but we didn't really talk too much. But um, we, we have a mutual buddy that kind of connected us after I get, got into cards recently. And as far as what I were to do, I guess at a young age, I was kind of more into Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! and like cards like that and not as much sports cards. Um, but over time with like ultimate team and ultimate, I guess ultimate team game modes, I definitely just got into like card collecting and rooting for players and player interest a lot more. And I've been watching sports just insane amounts for like the last five, six years with college and just a lot of free time. So same kind of, yeah, I mean, it just, you know, goes hand in hand. I just combine the, combine the two and I've been enjoying sports cards for probably about like five months now or so. I'm basically like a new age baby. Uh, came in near the Gary V height, but I wasn't drawn in because of Gary V. I just <laughs> enjoyed the prospect. I always got to preface that because, uh, you know, I, yeah. yeah, coming in around that time, it's very iffy. But uh, I was There's just a set lot onto of Gary it. V stands out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, nothing against them. They're obviously. I mean, they've no, been making money up until great. this point, I guess. But uh, <laughs> people in the hobby despise it, so tried to distance myself, but. Yeah, I got in around then. Um, I was mostly just put onto it, like I said, by uh, my mutual friend, um, Josh, who 
just said, you know, it's kind of a culmination of everything it looks like you enjoy. So you may as well take a stab at it. And it's been a lot of fun. And I've spent a good time now just learning about it and seeing what all I can pick up. And that's what we're basically here to do is just discuss what we're finding uh, to each other and just have a good time with it. And on top of that, you know, the more people that watch and just interact with us on Instagram or wherever, it allows us to discuss these things and learn more about it ourselves. So, I mean, I'm just excited to be able to finally put something out and start interacting with uh, a decent base of people that we can, you know, talk to and whatnot. So that's what has uh, brought us together, I guess. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a natural fit. Josh and I, that's actually how we became best buddies. So uh, back in middle school, uh, I, I hung out, we came over for a play date or whatever. I saw he had some sports card binders and uh, the rest was history there. And then, Pavel got into it, so it was uh, going to be no surprise that uh, <laughs> we connected there on that. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely um, a thing you can gel over. No, for sure. And, uh, oh, yeah. And then it, it's another thing about natural fits, too. Um, you know, I'm in the the stocks game. <laughs> uh, stocks. That's, that's my, that's my uh, daytime profession, as it seems to be a lot of these people on YouTube are. Uh, and, Pavel, I know that your degree – was you know centered around statistics right yeah yeah actuarial science yeah, actuarial science so oh boy numbers aren't aren't any uh any mystery to you or me i guess so no definitely uh, live in that realm no for sure so i guess we we have we have some some credibility i guess in, in that <laughs> sense yeah if, if you want to say so try to do what we can but speaking of doing what we can i guess we'll go ahead and just get on into you know sports as a whole right now in the card market and just everything we want to talk about today will kind of be a mixed bag of mostly what's going on right now and has been going on lately we're not going to get too into the weeds because we have a lot going on now with basketball back and uh, it's so great (laughs) yeah i know man it's just uh, finally be able to sit down watch i mean watch games all day it started like one o'clock get done at like midnight i mean i'm just a zombie yeah i could (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything better, especially just being so deprived. I was just, like, so sports hungry. Oh, like, my you know, goodness. Just, just sitting up late at night. Like, I think I bought, like, every single sports game I didn't have and just started playing them, like, as well, just to, like, fill up that time and that void. Oh, like, yeah. You know, I think, you know, NHL, like, Phoebe just, just got it all just to be able to play again. Like, <laughs> Yeah, never I never been more sports. motivated to, like, look at card prices when I have five <laughs> months of no sports. Like, yeah. oh, my goodness. But we finally got it going here, so we'll get into kind of the state of the bubble, I guess, is where we'll start, because I feel like that's what, you know, a lot of people are really worried about in terms of the NBA, and I guess not worried in the sense of COVID, because it seems like we are good there, but what I'm, I don't know, the biggest takeaway I have from the bubble so far is it's been a massive disappointment just to see Zion resting, and he's just playing like 16 minutes a game. I mean, I know he's on minute restrictions and whatnot, but... Just to yeah. basically make the Pelicans get back into this, you know? No. <sighs> it's so tough. I mean, yeah, when they need it, when they really did need wins, you know, and he was such an integral part. I mean, you know, the Pelicans were a 500 team. I think they were like 10 and 9 with him and without him, you know, they were only winning like 60, you know, I mean, not 60, like, you know, 40% of their games. Mm-hmm. So obviously he was a big part of that. Obviously, Brandon Ingram has looked really nice. Um, throughout yeah. the year, but they just need more scoring options on that team. Uh, Lonzo has not looked great either. I think what in that first game he was like one for seventeen shooting or something really bad like that. Oh yeah, so, it's been it's been tough, and especially coming off all this hype, I feel like there's been a lot of hype lately for the the Lonzo uh, stands. I I don't know. I, <laughs> a lot of people feel like he's going to be what I guess kind of pushes them forward, but it's definitely not looking like it and honestly seeing zion not playing crunch time as well it's like i i don't even know if the pelicans want to win right now like I, I, it doesn't even look yeah. like they have any urgency and now they're now they're like a game and a half back of even being in the ninth seed and it's like i, I don't know man it's just so so awful to watch yeah and now with memphis too uh it's pretty interesting as well just because you know jaron jackson jr towards acl so that's a big part of their team uh as the eight seed so i mean they re- they really had a chance so we'll see mm. what happens i mean you know kemba's also been on the that minutes restriction too for the celtics so yeah very uh, true but 
that's the thing. I, I mean, <laughs> Kemba, it, should, that, it seems like legitimate concern there. But I guess, Zion, you're just... You're just waiting it out. I mean, how long do they rest him for? <laughs> they rest him for the next like two years like this. I mean, <laughs> just cryogenically I, freeze him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand like what seems. I mean, next next regular season doesn't seem more important than right now, right? So I don't know why they would. Yeah. I mean, it's just tough. It's yeah. tough. No, I can't agree <laughs> more. It's a, it's a bummer, especially because Zion too, with just basketball, has. Uh, it seems like it seemed like Luca last year was like the stepping stone, and some of those you know baseball guys like you know Acuna and stuff like the, they felt you know Mookie Betts like for the last couple of years it felt like it kind of been brewing, and then you know Zion happened and the the hobby really exploded. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I think a lot of people are worried that like the the fate of the hobby rests on Zion's shoulders, which I don't think is true by any means. Uh, if you're willing to gamble, you know, <laughs> on a guy who's 285 pounds, and yes, he's he's super fun to watch when he's healthy, but he only has played 19 games, and people are willing to pay that much. I think the hobby's in a pretty okay place. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that big of a of a of an issue going forward, even if he busts. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. I mean, yeah, obviously, if people are you know willing to pay that much for that guy, like why why would they not be willing to pay that much for who could be the next guy? You know, I, it it doesn't yeah. seem like Zion's. I mean, some people would say he is, but he hasn't shown absurd talent to the point that I would say it justifies where we're at. So <laughs> yeah, I, you know. I mean, it's, I think it's definitely some FOMO, some fear of missing out for him. You know, you know, everybody wants to be like, oh yeah, dude, I believed in LeBron James when he was a rookie or whatnot. So. It's definitely. I feel like that's that's kind of how people feel about Zion, mm-hmm. or or Shaq again. Like Shaq was somebody you know just super fun out of the gates to watch. But yeah, I don't know. Even if it's not, I think you know somebody out of this class will be pretty good. Um, that's usually how it goes anyway. There's at least one, right? <laughs> yeah, gotta be. You'd think, but everyone. I I don't know. I guess the hope was that you would get the Pelicans into. Uh, playoff positioning but no longer looks like they uh, will be doing that and I don't I don't know in terms of seeing a champion uh, originally whenever we were thinking about doing this podcast it was actually looking a bit more grim in terms of if it would be able to finish out but I mean are you 100% do you think it's 100% that they crown a champion this year oh without a doubt I think the NBA bubble has worked really well they've had no COVID cases um you know, it stinks that, you know, Lou Williams would just up and leave for some <laughs> <laughs> wings, I guess. For, I guess. For wings, for wings and strippers. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think 100% that we're going to see a champion. They've been really strict with it, too. Uh, now, if you ask me about the MLB, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, that's a different different bag right there. I don't know but about yeah, that. I, I'm 99% sure we'll see an NBA champ. Yeah, I'm thinking LeBron can one up uh, MJ's flu game. You know, the, the, co- the COVID series. <laughs> yeah, I think I think so. It could uh, oh, I, could, I could go for good status so. there. I don't think there's any way the Lakers <laughs> win this year. It's very small in my mind. Yeah, I mean, I I, I agree. I, and initially, I wasn't I was nowhere even near certain, just because I felt like people leaving the bubble would just be so much more common. But apparently with only one reported story of it happening at this point. I mean, even if it does come in, it's not going to do that much, at least enough damage to where you justify ending anything. So I definitely agree. And I'm pretty confident with uh, where the NBA is looking right now. And I guess speaking of where we're looking right now with the NBA, I mean, what are you really thinking in terms of your strategy just generally towards cards over the next couple months what are, you, what are you looking to keep what are you looking to sell what do you think you know you just hold through the off season? what's kind of your approach yeah I mean for basketball it's been such a wild ride this year uh everything has gone up just miles and miles what it did the, the year before or even the year before that uh obviously you love to sell on the hype um that's the easy you know the the the, se- the sell high buy low i definitely think you wait until the off season i did pick up michael porter jr after he dropped that 34 points uh just because he looked really good he looked healthy and it wasn't a guy that i didn't believe in or and i already had some of his cards anyway 
I just picked up a couple extra things because uh, especially the Nuggets was an interesting situation in the first place because they had a lot of guys injured. So yeah. some of those young guys had to step up and there was points and minutes and just to be filled on the stat sheet. So mm-hmm. I was really interested in him and even Bull Bull, even though it doesn't look like he's going to play uh, that much. I, <laughs> I, you get, again, you I got just, a scrimmage sign. <laughs> Yeah, I knew that the Nuggets, that they had to find points somewhere and that they had to play somebody. And I believed in, you know, Jokic a lot in the first place. So, and like, you know, the Nuggets a bit were the one seed last year in the West. So uh, I thought that those guys were a good bet and still undervalued. But as a whole, uh, you know, I've been pretty much staying away from it just because it's been so high. I bought a lot of stuff during COVID, like, you know, Jason Tatum when he was like, you know, three to ten bucks opt his optics were like 20 bucks a card uh mm-hmm. and stuff like that but that's kind yeah, of been my point, strategy kind of just chilling out yeah just waiting for the off season i don't know is there anybody that you see that you know uh you think would be worth it even now uh, or buying i mean honestly no like big names really come to mind i mean as far as the only basketball thing i've even purchased recently was some marcus smart prisms i kind of like that just because in the current market basically i mean it's looking like most people are kind of priced out or if they you know wanted something already they probably would have gone for some more expensive stuff so the real money seems to be in just kind of the the dudes that are putting up numbers every now and then might win you a game off some weird stuff and just kind of have some shine on national tv i feel like that's kind of been the play so far no for sure but yeah i mean mean, overall I i do i do think that um you shouldn't really be within the basketball market right now. I mean, unless you have like a for sure in your head that you think they're getting out of the first or second round, you know, you shouldn't even be holding anywhere close to where I think a player might go out of the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, no, for sure. Like for, for some of those big names, like LeBron, I think so much hype, especially for those people right now, especially for LeBron, like his his rookies have gone again insane through the roof and i think people are legit betting on him winning this year and in a lot of people mind it's already like written in stone although he's had he's had a bad last few games Mm -hmm. and he's looked he's looked pretty human uh i don't know why it's in people's minds that they think like it's a sure thing wrapped up like injuries are still gonna happen in this bubble like uh and i don't and i the clippers even though the Lakers won against them, I still feel like they're the better team, especially when Lou Williams and Montrez, you know, Montrezl Harrell comes back. And I like a lot of the teams in the East, and I think an East team could win it this year. So, um, Yeah, I, I think people just think it might be a given just because they've seen LeBron obviously make the finals so many times in a row, so they just pencil him in there. But, yeah, I mean, essentially he's going to have to play two finals, you know. So I Yeah, I the West is know. so much tougher than the East. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, you kind of – if you're already penciling him to the finals, you should almost be penciling him in for the finals, like just to win it all in theory. So it's, I don't know. I guess that's what people are thinking, but yeah, I definitely agree that it's just not as given and they're like third through 12th guys, like <laughs> look very iffy right now. And if you're relying yeah. on Kyle Kuzma, like, you know, yeah, it's Alex Caruso spot to be has in. looked good. I'll, I'll give him that. <laughs> yeah. Alex Caruso has actually looked really solid, but yeah, yeah, Kuzma and the rest of those guys like Rondo not being in, yeah. Avery, Bradley Avery Bradley not playing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna. They could get tore up on, on the outside. Uh, you need a uh, you need a bench man. It's tough, especially yeah. when it's these back to back games like they're playing. Oh yeah, definitely agree. So that is our uh, approach as far as the NBA cards go for the next couple months in general. Uh, as far as where we've been probably dealing the most with, I would say so Ooh. far recently. It's definitely been soccer. We've been uh, we've hey. been stocking up. Yeah, shout out to soccer cards. Just been a, a hot as hell market for a, a good bit of time now. But, you know, I mean, if the market's hot, there's still always places to make some money and, you know, find uh, – a little bit of money to be made, but we'll start with, I guess, what's made us a you know, decent bit of money. We just have fun with it because we're an American duo here, uh, and that is the <laughs> <laughs> Christian Pulisic. Um, had himself a goal recently in the FA Cup final uh, against Arsenal and then also went off uh, in like the 60th minute or so, I do believe, with a, a hamstring injury that yeah, was pretty sucks. apparent. And honestly, he ended up getting a shot off of it, and it was it was pretty impressive. I I liked the, the strength he was showing. But, 
how have you been feeling about Pulisic lately and uh, the potential, I guess, of his cards going forward into, I guess, the off season here for the next month and a half, I do believe, of the uh, the Premier League and then beyond that? I mean, hopefully he cools off a little bit because, I mean, he is he is actually, like, so special. Just watching him win, <laughs> win it, you know, the Premier League came back. I mean, he looked like the best player on Chelsea, well, which is pretty crazy to say. And most people thought that. I mean, Giroud looked pretty good. But, I mean, Christian Pulisic looks so nice. And he, he can finish. He can attack. His pa- Some of his passes. I mean, there was, a, there was an assist against Liverpool uh, where they were down. And, he, you know, he comes on. He gets that 9 out of 10 rating. And he just – he megs, you know, Liverpool's oh, defenders. Yeah. You know, he breaks three guys and crosses it through for, the, like, just a perfect ball. For, yeah. for a goal like and that's you know Liverpool had the best defense in the Premier League this year and mm-hmm. so like he's a special player so I couldn't be more high on him uh you know and I don't it's not just American hype uh you know Klopp over there at Liverpool speaking of which like you know he's the guy that recruited him he wanted him to yeah. come to Liverpool he went to Chelsea like he's a special special player I think my only worry is injury that's the, that's literally the only thing yeah, I, I definitely agree as far as you know where he stands and the the no hype thing. I mean, with ev- and this is you know a theme we'll talk about a lot. But I mean, we are yeah. you know American based soccer collectors, so we will yeah. lean a little bit that way, obviously. But in terms of the hype, I mean that's naturally you know priced into what's going on and everything. So uh, you know there will naturally be more American people in theory that are going to want these cards in the future so you know just because it might be hype now doesn't mean it's necessarily uh going to be you know lower in the future it may just be exponentially hyped like uh, i don't i yeah. don't know i feel like the hype may be moderately justified even if it is still hype in theory like uh, it's tough yeah, i mean he had he had like you know besides uh clint dempsey he had in his first year in the Premier League, he had the best, you know, perf- the second best performance ever for an American player. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's on- he's only 21, yeah. and he's playing at Chelsea, you know. And Clint Dempsey only played at Tottenham for, like, a year. So, like, you know, this one of the big, big clubs. And, and that's just talking there. That's not even talking international. Like, oh, uh, yeah. he, I mean, just on the room for even upside, even though he exploded, like, you can have the goat for <laughs> you know, American soccer. Like that's pretty good, I think. Yeah, I think I, it's he, definitely a sound investment. When you see all the money that there is in basketball, just everywhere, you know, that could be focused in theory to like three or four dudes on our American team, and maybe even one or two. Yeah. So I mean, and yeah, we haven't even seen. You know, they did make the last World Cup, so I definitely think worldwide United States soccer is definitely underrated too. And so yeah. That, I, I feel like that, especially with some of those other guys, like, I feel like they're pretty undervalued. And there may be some mellowed down hype, too, because we didn't get the uh, the, the usual bump in uh, soccer fandom that you would get with our last World Cup. So maybe with the next one, we get, you know, that and some um, because we've kind of been missing out on it, I feel like. No, for sure. I mean, it definitely sucked. I mean, for both of <laughs> soccer fans, I was oh, so yeah. mad when we lost to Trinidad and Tobago. I was like, oh. Yeah, heartbreaking. Uh, but, I mean, you know, game. we've seen the lows, so now we can just <laughs> root for the ceiling. But, yeah, I mean, as far as Pulisic goes overall, I, I much agree. I think he's going to kind of mellow out uh, during the off season. I mean, obviously, the, the apparent injury is probably going to, you know, chill some people off of uh, Pulisic cards, and then he's not going to be uh, playing in general, even if he was fit for a little while. So you got some time there. Um, and overall, I mean, it's kind of a Geo Reyna uh, rant i guess but geo reina's cards are disgustingly expensive right now and honestly <laughs> if you compared it to pulisic like it makes pulisic look like a worthwhile investment and i i think that's more just the geo reina hype and you know those cards just coming out very recent but um yeah know, I, I think that it definitely shows you what they can be though no yeah i mean geo reina he's literally playing on the same club you know that pulisic played on before <laughs> Yeah. and you know pretty much at the same age and the hype is just insanely different obviously just because the card market is a lot bigger now so people are going to be you know paying attention more to the rookies than maybe some of those bets that have passed by but you know yeah man 
I think he he has room to cool down. He uh, and then mean, room to bounce after. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I think that'll be it as far as our uh, <laughs> pool of sick report. We'll probably do this quite a lot. I mean, in general, yeah. we'll do it with most American players. Um, I mean, you know, I watch more players than that, but as far as what we're going to care about the most, it's going to be uh, mostly rooted in that. Um, in terms of something else that we've yeah. just been kind of keeping an eye on is the uh, contenders cards that have come out about about a month or two ago and have been floating on into the market and kind of getting flooded out there. Um as far as the set, I uh, just really enjoy the looks and aesthetics of it in most sports, and you know they did a great job here. And honestly, uh, with soccer not having as many card uh, cards that come out universally, um, there's just I, I feel like so much more extra value there. So we've been looking at uh, Takafusa Kubo, Oyarzabal, uh, Ronaldo and Messi's kind of, and then also Neymar, just a lot of. Uh, big names there at the end, but also a couple younger prospects. Is there uh, anything you're thinking in regards to maybe some of the uh, the more established players like Ronaldo, Messi, or Neymar? I mean, I think for Ronaldo and Messi, if, if you had the money, I think I'd be really interested in their autos. Contenders, uh, the you know the the ticket autos are kind of one of the most uh, sought after autos in the hobby and other sports, especially football it's very well loved and I could definitely see that carrying over. Um, obviously it's a pretty big chunk of change, but I think that one's pretty solid again, because they also did the historical look back. So it's kind of like, it's a qualified Messi and Ronaldo rookie. Cause it's like the first year they've done the contenders for soccer. I definitely think it's uh, interesting for sure. And I definitely think it'd be pretty solid. And um, just cause again, we've seen first years kind of pick up in contenders is definitely like not a bad uh, series by any means, but especially the autos are really, really loved by the community. I think those would be a pretty solid bets if you would spend the money to get your hands on one of those. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree. And I mean, as far as where their prices are at now, most of them have kind of chilled out. They're about you know half of what they were initially uh, as a, just yeah. a general rule. Um, so obviously that's just tempting just looking at that. Um, yeah, in addition to that, I mean, I, I feel like just the, the throwback cards, like you're saying, and the overall aesthetics of the cards, definitely a lot more appealing in soccer, uh, because with other sports like football and basketball and all that, um, you have so many more competitors with very nice cards. And honestly, in soccer, it's sometimes just hard to even find a rookie card and <laughs> yeah. then maybe you might get a cool looking sticker, but not anything that, you know. It's cool in the sense that it's just, like, mundane. It's just yeah. like a, a plain car that you can sit there and be like, man, someone thinks this is cool, I guess. But if you can actually get um, some better cards that actually have eye appeal, and honestly, with the soccer ones, I, I enjoy them too because they really uh, put a lot of enthusiasm on, like, the badge and the kit, and I feel like that's really cool in soccer, especially since a lot of rookies usually move on to other clubs quick. It, it just gives you uh, – a look at, I guess, where they started a lot better than I feel like most cards would. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think I think they're great looking, and uh, I, I like the fact that they've cooled down. I mean, that that's kind of how a lot of sets go. But yeah, just you know, as a rule of thumb with a lot of those things, you know, that initial hype, uh, you know, really drives up those prices. But then the market becomes oversaturated, and I think a lot of us would be able to swoop in and pick up the stuff we want. And then there's sometimes even that, you know, second wave of excitement of people want stuff again. So I think now is definitely uh, we're in that plateau stage where we're bottoming out, where you could get some pretty cool stuff for it. Uh, not too much money. Uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty safe bet uh, if you like soccer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Soccer's definitely been uh, a joy to get into. And, you know, just the evolution of the soccer card market will be a lot of fun and see where it can go. But as far as soccer for right now, that is going to be where we wrap it up. And in terms of news and stuff we wanted to hit right off the bat, uh, there was also going to be a little football segment. But honestly, football is just disappointing at this point with just people uh, <laughs> getting not, you know, opting out of the season um, and then yeah. just never seeming to have a plan as far as the NFL goes to even, you know, uh, <laughs> start a season. It just is going to look like, I, I guess, they just throw their players through the ringer, and if 30 people get it, 30 people get it, and you just play with backups. I, I don't know. <laughs> so That'd I think that's about crazy. it for football right now. I think that's where we're at. Yeah, I mean, football's always been the no-fun league, and uh, 
they've always definitely been the most business oriented so and less about the players so it'll be it'll have to be an interesting season obviously you know Mahomes those quarterbacks oh yeah all that stuff all the hype on the quarterbacks and the only thing I guess I really wanted to touch on uh, as far as quarterbacks go real quick is the Mahomes contract basically uh, just being I mean it was something that I didn't even really know about I just kind of uh, read something that someone was talking about a discord about uh, that Mahomes contract was going to be up and like uh, they were looking to uh, put an extension on it here in about two months ago he told me it would be in a month and so I held on for that and right after I mean you know with a record contract and everything ton of hype into the card um, and the card kind of skyrocketed so looking forward from that what we can take is if you are about to you know sign a franchise quarterback in theory to an extension that you know is going to get people pumped you're probably going to have a good uh, bump up also in the card price and someone that I've been buying a good bit of now that I've sold my main Mahomes is uh, Deshaun Watson because I feel like that's kind of the next guy up for a contract and as far as his like price comps compared to I mean Mahomes it's like <sighs> eight times is less or maybe even higher in some cases like between 8 and 15 times different and I mean <laughs> that's just crazy I mean can you imagine when Houston's up 21-0 that I mean if anything's different you know we're never in this state right no yeah it's crazy especially on the fact that I don't know Deshaun Watson got rated super high by all the players on you know quarterback you know, or NFL execs, like, you know, which quarterback would you have? Like, he was ranked super high on that list. Uh, it's just so weird that, you know, his prices at one point, I mean, they've gone up a little bit. We're, like, even comparable to, like, you know, Dak Prescott and stuff. Like, that's pretty silly. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, he's, d depending on the cards you look at, but, I mean, yeah. he can be lower than, like, Drew Locke at some points. And it's like, man, I mean, you know, I, I definitely thought Drew Locke was a little underrated, but at this point, like, I feel like not it's at fifty five dollars, you know, for a <laughs> PSA nine Donruss for Drew Locke. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that's kind of dumb, man. It's just it feels too easy, but yeah, that's basically it as far as football goes. I mean, we'll hit that more up as the season gets closer, and I guess they show any signs of life. So um, now we'll go into our little uh, ad break um, in terms of where you know support comes for this program right now. You know, early on we're kind of self uh, self funded, self sufficient. So, uh, you know, we found a little money in our Instagram accounts and decided to sponsor. So if you guys want to go ahead and stop on over there, I am at Cutting Edge Cards on Instagram, all one word with no G in the cutting. And Caleb, you are? I'm uh, Caleb's underscore uh, sports underscore cards. Under, uh, cards. There Caleb, you go. Caleb sports cards. <laughs> there you go. Got it. Nailed it. First easy. try. Easy yeah. stuff. But, yeah, we found the, uh, the change hanging around and decided to throw it our way. So... Uh, if you guys want to check that out, feel free, uh, you know, posting, you know, just what we got going on in our collection and what we plan on doing going forward over there. I also throw up some stories every now and then just talking while I walk my dog. So it's a <laughs> great time. We, we like to have some fun um, in terms of having fun. Um, we're going to get into the, the rising stocks players, just kind of players that the last few weeks have been you know, on a good trajectory and where we see them upon that trajectory. So, uh, uh, I'll let you take this. I mean, we kind of already hinted at him a little bit, Caleb, but the first one uh, is Pulisic. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts? Buy, sell, you waiting? Uh, oh, when, spy, when do you buy, think buy, you're buy. hitting? <laughs> if, you think, if, you think it's a, if you think it's a good price, just compared, you know, and, you know, maybe maybe you wait a couple more weeks for soccer to calm down a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely probably start buying Pulisic if he could. Uh, oh. Oh yeah, I do. He's the agree. one. He's the one hot guy on the hype train. Where I'm like, you, you could, yes, just keep spending. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just hard, you know, for most people. I guess whenever you look back at what his cards were and where they are now, it's like, man, how can you make more money on that? But if you've seen the sports cards in general, I mean, it's this market makes no sense. So if you try to make sense of it, you're just lost. Um, well, but yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, know. relative to where he was i definitely think he'll drop a little definitely not too much because i mean at this point he's in the the front of people's minds and he'll probably stay there for a good bit but like i said earlier the little Gio reina hate that i threw in i mean i love Gio reina again but when you just compare those players it's like man 
that is that's just hard to sell me on. So I, I feel like Pool of Six probably a good buy whenever uh, he dips down just a little, and then whenever we get back into the season, he starts scoring goals again. You know, you got like a, a seven eight month run of him just doing everything he can and then finally probably doing it on an international stage so i, I just yeah for the olympics like whew. yeah and the it, next year's the world cup i mean yeah i just i don't want to be left out man i gotta buy at some point and this just feels yeah. like the slowest time uh before we just hit an inevitable climb i feel like so yeah, definitely I in the mean, same boat um, then next up, we have uh, Mahomes, who this is kind of coming off of the contract talk that we were talking about, um, has definitely had a decent bit of a climb lately. Uh, where would you sit, I guess, as far as his prices go currently? I would sell. I mean, you you compare him to like Aaron Rodgers, right? Aaron Rodgers um, has done the same thing. It's like the what if Patrick Mahomes never wins another Super Bowl, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're buying like – the his cards at a premium because a we know how special he is i think you know he's gonna win more mvps he, he probably will get another super bowl um but you know or like you know brett Favre, like a lot of the greats do not get another super bowl yeah uh, drew drew Brees, peyton manning got two like it's very hard to win more than one super bowl even as an all-time great quarterback and you know i think he's gonna have more mvps i think he's gonna put up more stats because his team is good right now but you know he got injured last year too so that took him out of the mvp race so i definitely think people are buying on more of a speculatory hype knowing how good he is and can be so i would definitely say sell even though obviously i believe in him because he's a great player yeah i i would agree i would agree i mean like i said earlier i i sold and basically have gone the mahomes route for now um like you know at the end of the day I definitely think his card prices could still just end up going up, but you got to compare it to (laughs) the return that you could get elsewhere. You know, it's not just sitting on one card and if it goes up, you know, a good bit, like obviously that's fine. But if you feel like there are better places to be, then probably don't die on the Mahomes Hill if you don't have to. Right. Yeah. I mean, I definitely like him. I'd say, you know, you know, I mean, I probably wouldn't pick up one now, man. I wouldn't. Yeah. I would I would wait I would definitely wait even into the season like maybe he has a bad week or something. Yeah, worst case scenario, uh, I mean it's worst case scenario I guess at this point, but it's still like when you say it, I mean Russell Wilson is someone that you f- I feel like you could kind of comp Mahomes to in a sense and Russ has one Super Bowl and I mean his card prices aren't anything special, you know? Like I mean, I, mean, I definitely think with Aaron Rodgers cuz he, didn't he win an MVP as well? Yeah, I, I think yeah, I I'd say those are definitely the most because like you know also on the the wow factor like I don't get why people don't think Russell Wilson is on the wow factor scale yeah, the same way yeah. the way he can scram- the way he can scramble and keep a play alive is like no other quarterback ever but uh, <laughs> but but yeah like Aaron Rodgers you can just throw around everywhere like you know his rookies are his chromes are like a few hundred bucks yeah you know. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, and not, not, not sixteen hundred. Yeah, the Russell Wilson top chromes are like PSA nine. They're like a couple hundred, and before that, they were like forty or fifty. They weren't. They weren't anything. It's like, ugh, I don't know. But yeah, that's essentially I think why we're both off of Mahomes. And did you see the Russell Wilson uh, clip on Twitter recently? Unlimited. No, I didn't. <laughs> it's hilarious. You got it. I'll I'll send you a link after. It's oh, okay. <laughs> he's weird as hell. <laughs> but. Moving, uh, I guess, back to soccer now. Uh, we just pop around everywhere here in this, uh, you know, we, we like to diversify. Uh, but Mbappe recently out with an injury, a lot like, I mean, Pulisic in the sense that he's injured and kind of hot. But um, what are you thinking about Mbappe? I recently purchased one, so I'm probably going to be biased. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I purchased a couple too, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we know where we are there. I mean, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> You can get him at a time where League One's out of out of play. They're not. They're not. Well, they're not doing anything. They're getting back into it, and he just got uh, injured and is going to be out for the Champions League match for you know about three weeks to a month. So it's not anything too crazy. I feel like it's a, a sensible time to buy. And um, you know, while we love Pulisic, I compared Pulisic prices to Mbappe prices, and when you, I mean, it's like three hundred dollars for a Pulisic select and like. It was at the time close to three hundred dollars for a Mbappe sticker, and granted they're not in the best condition, but I mean like that's that is pretty crazy comp wise. 
I mean, no, for sure. I mean, obviously that sticker absolutely exploded, but I was doing the same thing. I was comparing Mbappe uh, 2018 World Cup prisms to the 2018 optics, and I was mm-hmm. like, one's 200 bucks, one's 20 bucks. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, it was first year optic. Everybody loves that set. I mean, I ended up, I picked also, there, there was an insert of a prism from that same year, 2018. But anything before then, I think is really fascinating. You know, anything, 20, even 2017 is second year cards. There, there's some weird ones that are pretty yeah. inexpensive. Like, obviously, yeah, Mbappe, he's already won a World Cup, which is, you know, you don't have, you have very few shots at that. So he's got that on his resume. It's pretty much, you know, if he just continues to be great, uh, it's it's a lock for him. Yeah, I agree with the uh, like 2017, 2018, like weird. Uh, I guess not even weird sets like Optic and Prism, obviously very uh, well known. But the 2017 weird ones, um, I would just say they're probably decent play. I mean, and not the Prisms as much. I absolutely hate the Prisms. Like if you're buying an yeah. Mbappe <laughs> Silver Prism, I hate you as a person. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just I I do think that there's some value in the Optics and kind of the weird ones because. You know, they're not comparable in the sense of their overall achievements, but price wise, and what people expect, and kind of just how the card market works. You know, f- players that are looking to be star like right now can be close to like, you know, legend star prices. Like, uh, so when you look at like at Messi and Ronaldo and like what their first prisms have done and, you know, their first year of cards, like Mbappe's prisms are very, very hot but you just don't see the same thing with the optics or a lot of the other cards that are still in their first set. So he could definitely just take a stab elsewhere than the prisms, I feel like. No, yeah, I mean, I think if you were to put, you know, I mean, now those prisms are a little bit more probably like in the $40 range, but, you know, you buy five of those and, or you could buy one prism, like, from 2018. Like, I think you'd be way better off in the long hand having those five optics. Yeah, that um, definitely makes sense. I agree with you there. I agree with you there. Now we'll kind of get into some, I guess, uh, I guess, talents that we've seen coming out of the uh, the bubble. Uh, we got four here for in a row. We'll kind of go quick on these. I mean, there's not too too much to talk about. They just, I mean, some obviously uh, high performances. But we'll start with T.J. Warren. Uh, personally, just started selling a card recently of T.J.'s, but. I mean, just the way he's looking after that. I mean, I don't know. This dude's this dude's been kind of crazy lately, and doing basically everything the Pacers need him to do right now. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, holy smokes, has he been fun to watch? He's been an absolute bucket. I mean, fifty three points is wild in itself, and he's been shooting at such a high clip. Uh huh. And they're gonna get into the playoffs. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah I mean, I awesome mean. for Indiana Pacers fans. I mean, obviously, like, if you have his cards, like, if you just dust off your 2014 cards and you find some TJ Warrens, I'd definitely list and sell them. But uh, he's been a blast to watch. It's felt a little like Lin Sanity on, like, a lower scale. Yeah, yeah, because it's the Pacers. Yeah, because it's <laughs> not, not New Knicks. York. <laughs> if it was yeah. the Knicks, I mean, my God, probably. But, <laughs> you know, they haven't seen anything like that. Uh, but <laughs> beyond that, we got another one that I guess – it definitely felt more like insanity, I think, uh, but oh, with a lot less, uh, you know, I mean, results, but it's just the hype, and that's Bull Bull um, coming out. I guess mostly in the scrimmages was looking really good. The Nuggets were playing an extremely strange lineup, and I uh, kept playing him a little bit here and there. He's seen some minutes, but hasn't got the floor too much. What are you uh, thinking about him, I guess, going forward? Uh, also, I didn't touch on it, but TJ Warren, I don't like him long term because, like we I mean, it's the Pacers, you know, and he's like, <laughs> not, they're not their guy. So, uh, probably a no there for me. But as far as Bull Bull, what are you thinking? Um, I mean, I loved this dude. Like, even like watch, I would watch his games, his high school games, like on YouTube. And, like, he could shoot, he could dribble. I, I, I ate up so much Bull Bull content. So I was super pumped to see him get play time. When he dropped to, like, the 44th pick in the second round, I mean, I was absolutely shocked. I mean, this dude was highly recruited out of Oregon. He took Oregon far until he got, you know, and then he had that foot injury. Like, And so I was just, when he got dropped, I thought, oh, no, he's literally never going to see the floor again uh, when he got picked in the second round. Mm-hmm. But I think... I think there's still a chance for Bull Bull. Maybe it's not this year. Uh, you know, I know that it may be because he's a rookie, they're not playing him much. But, like, if he can stay healthy, like, he can shoot, he can dribble, he can pass. Like, 
those highlights that people were seeing, like, I don't think it was just scrimmage. Like, I think he's actually that good. But um, so obviously that hype was pretty crazy there for a second. And I, I think, it, you know, I don't know. I like him if, if he can stay healthy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's obviously the big if. But, I mean, that's that's a gift and a curse, I feel like, in the card market. I mean, it's it's really messed up. But, like, yeah, I, I, I'm – I would love my favorite dudes, my favorite prospects to get injured, I guess, because then I can just buy during a dip. But it's, you know, that's the thing. At the end of the day, you can kind of wait out some of these guys and some of these guys you can't. So you just got to be able to get in at the right time. And I, honestly, I didn't see Bull Bull doing, I mean, I don't think anyone really did, but doing this much that early, mostly because of the Nuggets. I mean, and their coach, they just like to stay close to the vest and not really play uh, too many guys so I mean long term I feel like there is definitely some upside there I, I don't know when he'll start to see the minutes that you know he'll need to see to I guess make people believe but at the end of the day I mean what he's shown so far is you know something I would definitely want on a team so I could I could definitely see him you know improving his minutes and improving his overall play and you know if you're improving what we already saw I mean geez you know it's, it's I mean yeah he, limit, can, I guess. He, can, he can run the fast break like as a, as a seven foot yeah. two dude Oh, yeah. I mean, again, I was seeing it in high school. Like, the dude could actually – he can shoot. He hit a three, like, the last Nuggets game. Like, it's while he didn't play very much. Like, mm-hmm. and and his defensive potential. He's seven foot two. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's good. just – that's there. <laughs> it's just a given. And, yeah, I mean, speaking of players that I guess I didn't think would see this many minutes, but I guess it makes more sense now, and that's Michael Porter Jr., the sixth out of seventh player that we have here on our rising stacks. Um, MPJ has just been crazy lately, uh, filling the holes that the Nuggets need, missing some of their guard play. Um, he just kind of fit in and fit in insanely well. Um, I, I felt like earlier in the season, um, you know, seeing what he could do on their team, they were never really running anything through him or for him. So if he would go out there and get you 15 points, uh, you would just see that, like, the dude had skill. It just wasn't being utilized. And really that just comes down to when they can start playing him. A lot like Bull Bull, you know, I just – the Nuggets have a ton of potential, and I definitely like their card prospects long term. So I I like Michael Porter Jr. too. Sadly, I sold before the playoffs happened because I just figured – uh, he wasn't going to get many minutes, but with the, the guards being out and, you know, Jamal Murray's thing and all that, it's just, it's made, it's made some nice room for him. And he's shown everything I would want out of someone to know that they could hit that level. So all right, do you feel much of the same way I'd imagine? Yeah, no, I, again, just another guy that you heard a lot about out of high school, you were seeing his highlights, um, you know, and he just got, he just got injured as well. Uh, but he was still picked pretty high. So. I think, uh, again, if he can stay healthy, like, it's really exciting for the Nuggets. I think they have two good guys that they kind of – they're kind of happy they got injured because they got steals. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no no Ooh. doubt. And now we got our last guy, number seven, Jalen Brown. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, this guy, I mean, he's been a stud since he's came into the NBA. He's just been – I don't know. The Celtics have kind of – he's kind of fallen beneath the limelight because – Isaiah Thomas uh, and his crazy run with them. And then Jason Tatum kind of stole the show too uh, with all the Kobe stuff and everything. But uh, man, I feel like Jalen Brown is a, for me, is a a real guy that could show real potential. He feels kind of like James Harden did in the sense of he was really overshadowed by the other players. But uh, I think eventually like he could legitimately, you know, take a lot of the shots for a team and uh, you know, he could score 25 a night for a team. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, just, like, looking at the way Boston plays at the end, I mean, Tatum obviously was rough towards the beginning, but, I mean, no matter the game, you know, it could come down to Jalen just having the ball and doing stuff with it, and the Celtics are happy with that. Like, it definitely feels like he's gone just under the radar in terms of that. Like, if you're going to actually turn to this guy during the final stretch of a game, like, that shows how much faith you have in him and what potential you think he can bring. And when you got so many stars on that team that can get their own shots like that, you know, it just makes me think more of him, even if I haven't necessarily seen everything I would want to see. But, I mean, he he still has shown plenty enough to, you know, make you consider it. Yeah, I mean, his cards have bumped up quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if now is the time to buy, but at the same time, I really like the Celtics' chance to win a championship here. So, uh, yeah. 
I guess maybe there's still some. Again, like there's still some you could probably pick up for like three five bucks. So I wouldn't yeah. think that's a, t- that's a. I don't think that'd be a terrible buy. Yeah, I just gotta play it smart and find some cards you think are undervalued. I guess relatively, that's always the thing that we talk about. You know, when guys are just finally starting to bump up in price, there's still tons of money to be made in other types of cards, and just finding where it hasn't bumped up yet. So, it doesn't necessarily mean you've missed the boat by any means, right? Yeah, well, Prism, yeah, may have skyrocketed. You know, you know, I'm sure plenty of his other you know cards would chill out. Same with like you know T.J. Warren. If you were a big T.J. Warren believer. Uh, I'm sure that his Donruss or, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't even Donruss in 2014, his <laughs> NBA hoops. Uh, <laughs> I'm, you know, I bet they're not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, long-term, like that's what we've seen with, I guess, a lot of the main players is, you know, if you're going to flip, if you're looking for a quick flip, like share prism and other high tier cards might be the way to go. But in yeah. theory, if someone actually shows that potential to stay in the, in the light for a long time, uh, it takes a lot longer for those like lower tier cards to bounce. So definitely the place to go if you feel like you might have missed it already. No, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, bringing it all around after talking about all the hype of what's been going on right now, uh, we're going to take a look back, I guess, and we'll do this quite often, just looking back and comparing an old player to a moderately recent player, and comparing their card uh, pop and their card prices, and just kind of, you know, given some perspective on that because it's always good to see where the vintage stuff is how that's played out and then how that can kind of uh, affect where we are now and what that means for the cards of now so uh, today we have Damian Lillard and Allen Iverson kind of two people I think are a decent comp what do you think Caleb I think yeah Damian Lillard has definitely become kind of more of an I like obviously Allen Iverson is way more of a cultural icon uh, but you know you know, Allen Iverson never won a championship. Damian Lillard, you know, Allen Iverson just got to the finals once. Uh, Damian Lillard's made it to the Western Conference Finals now because of last year. Uh, obviously, like, they're a lot of fun. They have those clutch shots um, that everybody seems to really like. And they're all, I mean, again, they're both pretty lovable because they never really upset, they never uh, upset the order <laughs> of the, the NBA, you know. They never took out your favorite team in the championship, so you can't really ever hate them. Yeah, that's very true. They just kind of sit there and, you know, they show you like, enough to where you love them, but then you get to beat them when you need to. Yeah, <laughs> which is, I mean, I think it's honestly like, you know, to be one of those guys, like that's like the, the prime spot because, you know, you win, you're hated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Then I mean, I mean, you could be Russ, I guess. <laughs> Never have a championship and just have tons of people hate you, but um, – <laughs> yeah, but Russ, Russ isn't very nice. He's a polarizing, he's a yeah, polarizing does it, figure. <laughs> does it to himself a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Um, but comparing these guys' uh, prices and uh, their pops, I, I guess we're going to go with uh, comparing the prism and the, the tops, uh, both the tops. I, I guess I'll throw the tops, the tops chrome and the tops refractor out here so we have all of it. These are all in PSA 10. So uh, just make that uh, of note and... I guess in terms of pop for these cards, um, for Allen Iverson graded, there's 2,500 Tops cards, there's 3,200 Tops Chrome, and there's 230 Refractors. So all in all, it's close to 6,000 cards graded, uh, while with Dame we have 790 Prisms graded, um, and then 300 or 35 Prism Silvers that are graded. So that's like a little over 800 compared to 6,000 which is pretty sizable. I mean, do you think that, you know, that's crazy. Long that term, only I mean, 35. Yeah. I guess those cards yeah. are pretty tough poles. Yeah. That's what, that's what I was pretty shocked by. I mean, compared to the refractors of AI, like the 230, you know, I don't know how many people right now in this market would just be sitting on a Damian Lillard silver that they just, you know, hadn't decided to do anything yeah. with. It seems pretty nuts, right? Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Um, man, yeah. Uh, how, how much did that was? Did you know the, anything about the last sale at all? Uh, yeah. As far as the prices go, uh, we'll go through a little comparison. The PS, these are all PSA ten, mind you. Uh, the AI tops um, go for four hundred dollars. The AI tops Chrome go for sixteen hundred dollars. So I don't know how you want to, you know, compare that. But Damian Lillard's Prism, which is only eight hundred of, compared to like the over five thousand of AI. 
uh, the Damian Lillard prism is 1000. So kind of in the middle of the tops and the tops chrome for AI, I guess. But like yeah. a, a fourth of the pop count. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I definitely, I, I think, I think that those prism, that prism price is pretty justifiable. Um, just because even though there's a lot less of them, I, I definitely feel like AI is a lot more of a cultural figure than Dame will be or could be. Um, unless yeah, Dame does anything crazy, but I mean, it seems like he's pretty stuck in Portland. So I, I thought yeah. that those prices kind of made sense. It was a bit closer than I figured they would have been. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, man, that's crazy. That's the 2012 prism, right? For Dame. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also that first year prism. So it's always, it's going to be at a premium in the first place. Yeah, that uh, is very true. Man, that's, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, definitely AI is deserving, especially because, you know, 90s collectors kind of, you know, that fits right in that time. The interesting thing about Dame to AI, though, is AI has a ton of different rookie cards you could get for him. While mm-hmm. Damian Lillard, there's not much basketball for yeah. that 2012. There's not very, very many true. brands, not very many sets. Uh, they didn't even print basketball cards in, like, 2011, really, uh, which is insane. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Uh, but it, will Damian Lord be a Hall of Famer to where that card is worth more? <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's that's Probably. the thing. I don't know. The Basketball Hall of Fame is always, like, it's iffy. It, it's it's not really a Hall of Fame, so I feel like he'd probably get in, especially if he just makes everyone happy and just kind of, like, the fun dude, you know? Yeah. I There's mean, always I a spot for that, I feel like. He's going to be the franchise leader in Portland points, probably. Yeah, yeah, he's going to. He'll be, he'll be beloved by a city and a franchise forever, so that probably does it, right? I mean, it's not the biggest one, but... He was All-NBA first team in 2018. Uh, oh, yeah, that was the year that Steph was, like, third or some stupid thing like that. <laughs> I was big No disdain dumb. there, no disdain, I'm sure. you just Yeah, Damian Lillard's never had one playoff win against Steph Curry at his first team. That's a joke. <laughs> Second team in 2016 and 19 and thir- third in 2014. So he's also rookie of the year. Oh, he's he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah. And definitely, uh, I mean, picking up later with all those uh, first, second, third teams, like it only shows potential going forward for him. Um, as far as like the, the silver price compared to the refractor, I thought that was actually pretty sizable. I mean, when you compare the tops and the tops chrome – um to the prism they're close but the refractor there's 230 of ai and that's 18 grand um while (laughs) dames is there's 35 and it's five grand so are you kidding that seems like a steal yeah yeah that seems like an absolute steal if they came on the market yeah Uh, hard to find i i got that five grand number actually comping from a bgs 9.5 um, because okay. the last PSA 10 to sell was like in June, so I didn't take that. Um, but still, I mean, you know, compared comparing their tops chrome or AI's tops and tops chrome to that prism, and like you said, not many prisms, and then even on top of that, not that many silver prisms as we've seen. Like that does does feel, I guess, relatively cheap. Obviously, still a five thousand dollar card, but I mean, eh, it's definitely interesting. Oh, for sure. I mean, he is beloved and. I mean, he's going to be a Hall of Famer, so people are going to want his card uh, for that reason. So that's definitely not a bad purchase by any means. Yeah, but yeah, definitely hefty. <laughs> Overall, some uh, some high tier value, I guess, on the the high cards of Dame. And uh, overall, I felt like AI was definitely respected more than I thought he would have been. But I, I know he's gotten a lot of a lot of steam lately in his card prices as well. So uh, it might just be the market readjusting. But I, I definitely didn't think he'd be kept up at least this well. Alrighty, so our kind of our, this is our hot take section right here. Um, this is our uh, what were you thinking, or uh, I guess what were we thinking? Uh, just kind of where we uh, say these were some pretty bad purchases. So I'm gonna start off with a uh, Jarrett Stidham <laughs> for this, uh, since we haven't made one in a while. I just want to laugh at all the people who bought Jarrett Stidham rookie cards for like $150. Uh, I think like people were actually doing this. And I couldn't have looked just more beside myself as I watched people spend this money. Uh, It was so dumb. A, the Patriots were going to do good this year in the first place. But, like, you're going to pick Jarrett Stidham, who they're, I'm sure, begging to find a replacement for. And then Cam Newton came along. So uh, I felt very justified in that. So what were you thinking? That makes sense. 
but yeah, I definitely, I mean, I agree as far as that goes. Um, uh, honestly, there's probably some money to be made in just like having Adam Schefter's notifications on and just being ready to just go ham <laughs> on eBay, honestly. Because that first day I saw within like six seconds of that trade happening and I was like looking all over eBay. I'm like, should I just be buying these cam cards? And I thought about buying some and then like an you idiot, should've. I was like, eh, maybe I'll get end up getting screwed. And then by the next day, like everyone's off of them. Like they're, they're gone, you know? I'm like, oh my goodness dude it was nuts but i mean as far as looking you know and this isn't to say that none of these cards are never going to do good again it's just you know yeah. where is the hobby and the first one and we'll start off with a bang for me is just anyone that's you know been stocking up on zion obviously Oof. you know you have enough cash to be beyond this world so i'm sure you're doing okay <laughs> um but i mean just seeing this man get minutes restricted um after four months of rest and getting prepped and whatever he's been up to um just in games that need to be won you know it, obviously it shows the franchise believes in him and wants him to be healthy but it also shows you that level of concern that i feel like no one else has and uh you know add that to the fact that every time i see this man walk or fall i just cringe inside <laughs> um it just it has me concerned man and uh, as much as I'd love for him to, you know, be the next big thing, and I mean, he's such a, you know, lovable dude and a good character, and on a great team that has a ton of potential, it, I, I just feel like there's too much risk that, you know, you, you can't, you can't be doing that, you know, if you're a sane person, I feel like, but, <laughs> you know, I also have not enough money to buy it. <laughs> Let me piggyback on this. Let me, John Morant, man, like, if you're collecting for yourself, like, that's yeah. a great. But, like, if you're doing this as an investment purpose and you're like, man, I'm going to buy John Morant and flip, the rookie year is anything but the time. Like, you wait for next year. Like, his cards are going to go down in the offseason. The Grizzlies are going to lose in the first round if they make it. Uh, like, he's going to get bounced. Like, people hype him for an almost dunk. Like, he didn't even make the <laughs> dunk over Kevin. Like, that's his biggest moment of the whole year. He went for a giant dunk. Like, I don't know, and guards that are driving, they have a short short shelf life. Look at Derrick Rose. Um, you know, Dwayne Wade could shoot, you know, but John Morant can't shoot as well. Um, you know, he's going to have to be able to, to bump up his three percentage. Like, just be as a guard, like, athleticism is great, sure, but you really, you really, really need to be able to shoot the ball. And, um, I love athleticism and boy, it's fun to watch, but there's a reason that Russell Westbrook hasn't won a championship. Yeah. Oh man. It, it is tough. It is definitely, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I get it. And watching him go up for those. And that's about all he's known for is those crazy dunks. It's, it's tough, but I'm going to stick with it here on the Grizzlies and just kind of hammer home, I guess, <laughs> the fact that the Grizzlies aren't going to do anything. Um, and that's uh, some, some Dylan Brooks shade. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone's really hyping Dylan Brooks too high, so I don't think there's too many heads I'm hunting here. But uh, just seeing the man play, I mean, obviously, you know, I like someone that can play with a, a little bit of, I guess, almost arrogance about them to where they just shoot as if they, they haven't missed a shot. Um, but he's basically lost like two games for the Grizzlies so far in this bubble, and the Grizzlies <laughs> have been, they've been struggling, obviously, and much. Uh, much hand in hand with Dylan's performance, and I mean, at the end of the games, this this man is taking some of the craziest shots I've seen that just have no room, especially on a Grizzlies team where you know you can get buckets elsewhere, and you know they do what they can. But there's 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 enough talent to go around that he's just kind of stopping all the ball movement and then just throwing up errant shots that I wouldn't even expect you know out of people like Trey Young or James Harden, but. He just has that confidence, and while it may be good sometimes, it has been just horrid to watch. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I think it's I think it's sketchy for you know borderline bench players most places anyway. So yeah, um, yeah, definitely speak, not. Where speaking you of do. which, people who were hyping up Alonzo Ball, are you kidding me, guys? <laughs> guys, it, like his rookie year, they were like kind of hyped. Like, imagine if you'd have been a rookie this year, it'd have been insane. But like, what are you doing, like? You, in this hobby, it's people who can score points. You know, great. He has some good passes. Like, so does LeBron. But I mean, like, it's about the points scored, and like whether that's good or bad isn't the point. That's just what it is. And LeBron and Lonzo has an absolutely broken jump shot. I mean, like, 
it's terrible. Everybody makes fun of it. Everybody knows what it is because it's bad. Uh, he, he's like, he, he has some pretty good driving ability and he's a good sized point guard who, and he has good handles, but like you got to be able to score points. And we've seen Lonzo even in this bubble again, miss shot after shot after shot after shot. Like, uh, it blows my mind. So, uh, do not buy Lonzo ball. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. Yeah. I mean, as far as his jumper, like it's gotten, it, it started to look a little better. I, I also would have been on the, uh, on the anti Lonzo side, I would have had him written down, but you know, I'll just hammer it home with you. Um, <laughs> <it> just, <laughs> it's not been fun to watch. Obviously, you know, people tell you his jump shots gotten better, but you know, if you put a good shooting coach with anyone, their jump shot will get a little bit better looking. And then in reality, is it actually better? I mean, he's not, he's not anything too crazy right now. And I don't think that peak Lonzo is going to be anything that you're going to end up having carry a team in any form. And as far as the, uh, pelicans go i basically as much as i hate on zion i that's that's because his prices are extreme um i still think zion's probably you know their best up and coming player and then and it i, I think it'd be weird to say otherwise but then in addition to that i think brandon ingram is kind of you know, your bucket getter so i if you got a bucket getter you got a uh, a dunker down low that's just going to take it to people you already got two people that are going to be outshining lonzo naturally if he performs well so yeah, I definitely agree. And then in terms of the the last thing or the last entity I'd like to roast, uh, it's not as much a player. It's it's all the people that believed in SGC way too much these last few months um, just because PSA and BGS have been backlogged and had all this COVID thing going on. Uh, the SGC hype was real in the, uh, in the threads that I read and where I hang out. Um, some people were hyping up SGC like they were like a like an SGC 10 should essentially be a PSA 10 like what you know what's the difference and that's just it, it's asinine like sure in, in theory like you know they get enough cards they're probably like yeah this is the best card and maybe it's close but at the end of the day SGC has to build a brand like you have to build the brand for a good amount of time and just go and have a pretty good record at least in the public eye and as far as SGC goes I just I'm not ready for that yet. I think they still have a long ways to go. And in terms of like their slabs and stuff, sure, they're different colors, sick. That's about the main thing people will tell you when they're like, why should I buy SGC? They're like, oh, well, you know, black case. Like uh, PSA, BGS, anyone could come up with a different color case if they wanted and offer it. So who's to say they don't? And then all the black case people are like, shit, what am I, what am I doing here? Um, <laughs> So I, I don't know. I think it's an okay buy. If they were undervalued, you know, I'd probably be all over SGC. Like I'm a PSA nine guy. I'm a BGS nine point five guy. I'm for the undervalued ratings that I feel like are there. But not with SGC. But not with SGC, and especially not at the hype levels people see them at. Because it's just it's very strange. I, I didn't get it at all. I do like their half system. Like kind of like um, just like beat with BGS too. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean. Yeah, no, yeah, like, I definitely nah. like some stuff, but just I mean, where they yeah, were I valued, mean, I don't. It was. Tough. I mean, I don't. I'm never gonna like be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna send my cards there. That's a great idea. <laughs> uh, I my my last roast is a uh, good old Ben Simmons again. Just like Philadelphia, you know, they're a pretty good team, but and he's athletic and he's got a nice body type, but man, there's so much more that comes into being a basketball player than that. Uh, it like shooting the ball. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Yeah, and just just everything else with that. Uh, I mean, man, if I've seen if I have to see like one more ESPN post that ooh look Ben Simmons hit a three pointer in warmups, like come on, I don't know, I I don't get the hype. I never saw it. Um, he's just he's not exciting. Uh, he's not excite that exciting to watch. Um. I don't, I don't understand the, the hype and, uh, don't buy Ben Simmons. <laughs> just their don't buy segment. I mean, that's essentially what it is. We just roast yeah. him into oblivion and try to keep you away, but we can only do so much. You know, obviously it is what you want to do at the end of the day. So, uh, you know, if we were gods, you know, we would probably just <laughs> be buying the cards we could and keep all this to ourselves. But, um, <laughs> it seemed like you kind of had a theme there with your, uh, hated cards, you know, uh, three point guards that can't shoot. It was, it was pretty yeah. refreshing. I liked it. 
Okay, nice. but as far as <laughs> as far as all that, we're going to get into our uh, final picks of the week. We'll do this to round off almost every episode, um, and that is just one person, or I, eh, you know, you can throw in a couple extra if you got if you got a few that you like. Um, but basically, one pick, one ditch. What are you What are you looking to buy, and what would you be looking to sell if, in theory, you, you had these cards? So we'll start with you, Caleb. What are you looking to buy? What are you looking to sell? Man, well, I didn't talk about baseball whatsoever. I just said I dabbled. <laughs> Uh, we didn't talk about it. So my pick of the week is actually, it's going to be Barry Bonds uh, in higher grade cards. Uh, man, they are cheap cards. Obviously, in the 80s, they were printed quite a bit. But, man, those nine, those eights, nines, even tens, like, you know, nines are great because they're not as expensive as the tens. Uh, they're not expensive. And, um, you know, this guy's a home run leader. You can say what you want about juicing, but, you know, where I sit on it is – you still have to swing the bat, and it's still got to go be a home run. So, uh, I I don't care. Uh, I think baseball voters are stupid, and baseball writers are dumb, and that he should have been the first ballot Hall of Famer. But so, I think he's one of the goats of baseball, and his cards are so cheap uh, because the old guard thinks that he was a big fat cheater, even though everybody was doing it. So, I definitely like those Barry Bonds cards. That's my pick of the week. Uh, I definitely agree. I mean, as far as like PSA nines too, I definitely agree there because you know, I mean, it's I guess known throughout most of the community, but or at least theorized. But after long enough time, you know, you're probably not getting a ten, even if you have a ten. So if you can, you know, get a nine, then you might be even in theory getting a ten. And if you get a nine that's been graded within the last five, ten years, you're even more likely getting a ten. So, you know, if you uh, believe in future. Uh, places that may be grading or if you you know believe in in theory someday getting something that can perfectly grade cards uh there's definitely some value probably to be had there i would imagine yeah for sure <clears throat> okay um and then we'll do i guess my pick we probably should go pick for pick and then who we're ditching at the end um but yeah. as far as my pick for uh the week and i mean again these aren't these are never picks that are like the best return i mean what we're not doing that right we're not doing like best return on investment in a month because if if then yeah. you wouldn't be doing barry bonds obviously so no for sure we're just you know <laughs> we're picking people that you could hold on to for a good while and definitely see some profit in and uh, as far as my pick i like timothy Weah. uh you know speaking of uh, u.s soccer abroad uh it didn't really touch on much, much else this episode because there isn't much going on but that's a great thing because it's a good time to buy uh timothy way coming off of a, a long injury and also uh, just kind of recently before the injury getting loaned out to lily um I mean, he he is just prolific and so exciting to watch. I mean, uh, skills to be had there, uh, a skilling ability or scoring ability. Um, I mean, he provides everything we're going to need on a wing. And going forward, I just think that there's basically a clear spot on our team for him to uh, hop into as far as the U.S. men's and national team goes uh, in terms of if, if he stays healthy. Now, I guess that's a question to be had, but at the card prices currently, I, I don't even really think it's that big of a bother. Uh, you can pick up optics for two, three dollars a pop, probably, um, and then the optic hollows maybe like ten dollars. And I mean, you know, you get these in lots. It's it's definitely a good place to be, and I think he has potential with uh, League One starting back up soon to actually go out there and start doing stuff that U.S. people will see during a time when there's no Bundesliga going on. And I mean, even if he is stacked in there, he'll be one of our best goal scorers. Uh, out in Europe that we'll just be able to see highlights of and people will finally start to get into. So definitely like him. And then just a side note, uh, honorable mention, GSP. It's been recently kind of rumored and announced, I guess, theoretically, uh, that he should be fighting Khabib because Khabib just Ooh. tweeted out that he wants that fight in April next year, I think. Uh, I think it was April. Uh, it was springtime nonetheless. But, uh, you know, if you could grab some of those cards, I mean, GSP is definitely like an absolute legend in UFC. And uh, if he comes back to the octagon again, especially for that fight, could see a ton of hype. So I'm pretty excited for that. That's awesome. Now we're getting some UFC even sprinkling this podcast. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you yeah, we, we, do what I can. Oh, you, you love it. All right. I guess it's now time for a ditch. And mine's a little bit, uh, it's a spicy pick for sure. Uh, I say ditch Giannis. Um, man, I think he's got, he's obviously probably going to win the MVP now. Um, so if you want to hold for that. But I would not be surprised for an early upset in the playoffs this year. The Bucks haven't looked good. And, man, he's been very liable to foul out in 
uh, in that crunch time just because, you know, he's in the post. Um, he's just in a lot of place where he's going for blocks and, you know, doing the Greek, like the Greek freak does. Uh, obviously, I think long term he's he's fantastic. But I think, you know, for a bubble on him, like there's a lot of expectations right now. And if he doesn't win a championship this year or even make the Eastern Conference finals, like I think there's money to be had now. If, if he goes to Golden State, well, the cards bump back up, but I don't know. So I think that uh, it wouldn't be a bad time if you're holding a bunch of Giannis to, to, to rake in some of that profit for sure. Yeah, that's definitely – Definitely not a bad pick. I mean, I see, I see where you're coming from. You know, Giannis hasn't done anything. I mean, obviously getting MVPs, but nothing too, too crazy that I guess warrants this crazy uh, prices that he's at. But everyone's prepared for the future, and honestly, you know, even if he does win a championship, the odds on that not great. But the odds of his prices dropping, whether or not he wins or almost anything, like Mahomes' prices dropped last year after he won a Super Bowl. So, yeah. I mean, sure, the NBA market's popping, but that doesn't guarantee Giannis cards are going to go up 2, 3x after he wins. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. So I, I, I definitely feel where you're coming from there. Um, and, you know, going with also kind of a goat of another sport, I guess, or uh, proposed goats, kind of in the in the same vein of Giannis, and that is uh, Ronaldo and Messi. Um, I would be ditching their first-year prisms, uh, in my opinion, um, now, their they're rookies are obviously, you know, things to hold on to forever, so I'm not saying Ronaldo and Messi cards as a whole, but their prisms have just utterly blown up these last few months and the last, you know, six months to a year in general. It used to be a dollar, a few dollars a pop, now up to $150 and, you know, Ooh. and rising. Um, and, you know, they, they were 30 40 bucks even a few months back, so you could have gotten in on this. But at the end of the day, they've been just going up, you know, two three four five times as much every few months and at this point for you to get that type of return or get anywhere near that they would have to go up to prices you know lingering 300 500 dollars and these are like eight nine tenth year cards of of them and obviously you know everyone loves a good set but i i just don't know how long term um you could you know be in that market and think it's a good pick um maybe maybe they end up going up but you're definitely going to get a better return on investment with uh, other rookies of theirs recently i picked up a messy uh monday chromo rookie that was you know, like 500 bucks and a ps or a bgs 8.5 granted least valuable rookie but when you you know look at that it's it's a rookie messy for a little over 500 bucks or you could have a prism eight to tenth year card somewhere in there for you know <laughs> close to a third a little over a third of that price like that is that's nuts I, I just could not imagine thinking that that's going to hold up long term so you know i'd be happy with all those profits that i got and shout out to all those people that bought that because i see i see them all over instagram man <laughs> make me so sad that i didn't buy any but i i just don't know how long that can continue so that's my uh ditch of the week and i, I don't feel bad about it no, I mean, I agree. I mean, at some point, Prism's going to look outdated to people. I, I think people don't understand it. Like, if you look at, like, Top's Finest from the 90s, they look so ugly now. But, like, mm -hmm. it's what looked so good and futuristic -y at the time. And I think, you know, eventually Prism cards are going to look dated to people. Even those, like, 2014 ones, they kind of start to look kind of silly to me. So uh, yeah. I think it's going to happen where people are going to be like, is this really the best set? Mm -hmm. Um so I definitely think long-term prism is not the play. No, I agree. And then the final thing, I guess, on <laughs> continuing out on the Ronaldo Messi thing is they they've their first year World Cup Panini cards have popped off lately. Uh, probably going for like three, four hundred dollars a pop. Um, but I mean, when you compare that to their their prism cards, like I would definitely much rather have uh, their first World Cup cards that are almost you know uh, double the price and maybe a little over that. But it's just so much more value to be had there. So um, yeah, definitely what I would be ditching. Yeah, and yeah, it's way cooler. They are a, a different, a very strange type of card, but enjoyable to look at. Very colorful and definitely like those a lot more than just a, a bland you know a prism. Even though prism, I guess, is king right now. So. That is going to be it for our uh, inaugural episode of uh, Sports Cart Corner. Uh, Caleb, you have a good time with this one? An hour 20 in? You've been grinding? I, I did. I had, a, I had a blast. I mean, it's pretty easy. We do this, like, all the time anyway, so might as well <laughs> yeah. just chuck a mic in front of it. <laughs> 
Yeah, very true. Just throw some structure to it and throw on the recorder and you know, I'll be uh, I'll be cutting out these videos, posting them all over our Instagram like we said before. Caleb, your Instagram is you got it this time? Uh Caleb Sports Cards. That's yeah. all me on underscores Instagram. in between, yeah? Yeah, underscores in between. All right, nice, nice. And then I am at Cutting Edge Sports with no G in the cutting. Um, but, yeah, that is going to be it for us today. Uh, hopefully you guys have a good one, and hopefully you guys had a good time listening, and we will see you uh, in the next one. Peace.